Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm back with a requested video talking about preparing your body for pregnancy with nutrition and a couple of supplements that I've used. So thank you as always for your video suggestions and requests. If you have ideas for me to make videos on different topics, then be sure and leave me a comment down below and let me know. Thought this was a great topic to talk about. I'm just gonna share my experience of what I've kind of read and researched and done as far as getting your body ready for pregnancy with good nutrition and the supplements that I've used. So if you've been on my channel at all, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of the GAPS diet. That is probably the number one thing that I did to to restore my health and get it in a good place way before I even had children. And looking back at the time, I didn't realize all the implications of everything that I was doing by restoring my health with the GAPS diet. But now I realize that that was a crucial thing. At the time I was more into just trying to feel better and being able to function. And I did have though in the back of my mind, like I don't know if I'm healthy enough ever to have children with the way that I feel right now. And so being able to go through the GAPS diet and get that health restored and make such, you know, improvements with food was amazing and I'm so thankful. But that is my number one thing is diet. That's what we're gonna talk about first. So there's a couple different ways that you can go with this. You can follow a full Weston A. Price style diet. And if you're new to what the Weston A. Price Foundation is, I have a video that explains that and I'll have a link down below to their website where you can read about it. Basically, it's nutritional principles based on the research of Dr. Weston a. Price. He was a dentist who traveled around the world at a really unique time when there were a lot of traditional cultures still living and so he went and found the healthiest ones and really studied what they were eating and he found that fat soluble vitamins were very very important. Vitamins A, D, and K and he found different foods that were rich in these that these people were eating a lot of. Depending on where they lived in the world these could be different kinds of seafood, things like cod livers, cod liver oil, fish eggs, and then for more land dwelling people that were not close to the sea, it would be like grass-fed dairy, the butter from cows that were eating, green grass that was growing in the spring, organ meat, things like that. So that is one way that you can go if you feel like you're already in pretty good health, you don't really have health issues that you need to address, but you just want to make sure that you have your nutritional stores really built up and ready for pregnancy because growing another human being takes a lot of nutrition out of your body and being able to have that there ahead of time makes a really big difference for your own health as well as the health of the child. So that's one way that you can go. A really great book, besides the regular Nourishing Traditions cookbook, which I highly recommend, this one is fantastic. The Nourishing Traditions book of baby and child care, and it goes over everything that you need to know for how their recommendations are to eat, what foods to focus on before pregnancy and during pregnancy. But it's a lot of those really nutrient dense things that I mentioned before, the animal foods that contain those really important important fat soluble vitamins A, D, K, as well as lots of other nutrients. The other route, which is the way that I took, since I did have health issues that I needed to overcome, was following the GAPS diet. So you might recognize the new blue book, which is what I would recommend if you're, actually, you know, I recommend both of them. And I'm going to do a video pretty soon where I talk about the two different books, why they're different, why she came out with a second edition, and which one to read, depending on what situation you're in. But if you have to pick just one, and if you're aim is for getting ready for trying to be healthy before having a baby then I would probably go with the blue one but you can't go wrong with either of them they have the same nutritional information in them but this is great if you have either physiological and or physical health problems that you need to address before getting pregnant so the GAPS diet basically goes through a gut healing protocol it takes out the hard to digest foods for a time really focuses on the gut healing and the probiotic foods that restore that bacteria, that balance of friendly bacteria. It focuses on restoring the body's detox pathways because in GAPS people, the detoxification system is not working correctly, so it restores that. For healthy detox, which is something you definitely wanna get done well before getting pregnant. You don't wanna be detoxing right before or during a pregnancy because that's not good for a baby. And since the GAPS diet is based on a Weston A. Price style of eating, then it's gonna focus on on those 
those same animal foods that I talked about that contain all those really important nutrients, the fat soluble vitamins, the minerals, all those kinds of things. And so that's great. The way that you can think of it is the Weston A. Price diet is the well person's way of eating. And then the GAPS diet is the sick person's way of eating if you need to fix a problem. So those are my biggest tips for which way to eat when you're wanting to be as healthy as possible before having children. And the foods that I focused on were things like meat stock or bone broth, depending on you know what stage of, of gaps I have been in. And then organ meat, lots of egg yolks, grass-fed dairy, and then different seafood, whether it was in the form of cod liver oil or fish eggs or seafood itself, like sardines or something like that. And really focusing on lots of healthy fat with my meals because your body can't use the nutrients in the food unless it has fat to act like a catalyst to be able to let your body actually absorb and use those vitamins and minerals. So that's something that I really tried to focus on. For supplements, I usually try to keep it really simple and focus more on food, but there are some key supplements that I did find really helpful. The cod liver oil, the, my two favorite brands are either the Rosita raw cod liver oil or the Green Pastures fermented cod liver oil. I usually go back and forth between the two just because I like them both and that way I feel like I have my bases covered if I'm rotating between two of them. And then also on and off, I've done the high vitamin butter oil from Green Pastures as well. That's supposed to be really good to take with the cod liver oil because they work together. You're actually getting more benefits from both of them because they work synergistically together. So I will oftentimes take those. I have a cell salt, homeopathic cell salts protocol that I followed. I'll put a link down below where you can read some more about that. And then really focusing on those organ meats. So with the cod liver oil, the butter oil, and then the organ meats, whether it's desiccated liver capsules or swallowing raw liver or eating a lot of liver, those really cover my bases for anything supplement wise. And then I have a few other things that I'll add on an as needed basis. I have another video, one of my pregnancy update videos where I talk about all the different supplements that I'm taking. And so you can kind of check that one out. I'll link that down below and see my whole variety for whatever needs I have, like an iron supplement, different things like that. But when you're just focusing on getting your body ready before, it can be pretty simple. Just those organ meat, the cod liver oil, the butter oil, that's really good. And then besides that, really focusing on food. I find that it's usually more cost effective to not spend a ton of money on supplements all the time, but rather put that money toward the best food that you can get. So grass-fed meat, free-range meat, really high quality seafood if you're able to find access to it. And really nowadays, no matter where you live, there's companies that will ship in seafood really nicely, high quality, fresh seafood from good places. So that is usually an option. Even if you're like where we are in Colorado, far from any oceans, you can still get some stuff. Some fish eggs are super, super nutrient dense. Those are really nice to add. I found a good place online for ordering salmon roe in little frozen jars. So that's something that I've gotten. And just making an effort to make sure that your diet is as high quality as possible does goes a long way in making sure that all those nutrients are there that your body needs. So something that Dr. Price discovered in his research and travels was that both parents in these healthy cultures focused on their nutrition before becoming parents. So this is important for fathers too. If there's a need and they're open to it, going through the GAPS diet might be a really good thing for them to do. Otherwise, just eating a full Weston A. Price style diet and focusing on those really important nutrients, those fat soluble vitamins, minerals. And then after pregnancy, obviously the mother continues eating this way to keep those nutrients there. And then of course through nursing as well. So just a brief recap, focusing on those really nutrient dense ways of eating, either the full Weston A. Price diet following the guidelines in this book. If you don't really have any health issues that you need to overcome, if you do have health issues, then the GAPS diet is the way to go, following that for a year or two. And then as far as supplements, keeping it really simple, trying to put your money and resources more towards the best food that you can get, but a few key supplements are really helpful. That cod liver oil, the high vitamin butter oil can be good. It's not as necessary as the cod liver oil, but it can be good. Those homeopathic cell salts are a nice option. And then organ meats, whether you're eating a lot of liver or taking the desiccated liver capsules, those kind of things for supplements. Hope that you found that helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Check out those related videos and links to other resources that I mentioned that will be linked down below. Also check out that description box for free eBooks and other goodies. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else that you think would like it or find it helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos 
videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.